So, hi everyone, I'm Sarah, and when I was younger, what I wanted to do is make books. So, maybe something just like this one. And that's because I think books are great, right? Because you can learn from them, they can entertain you. Uh, in cases like this, they might look pretty on a bookshelf, or they might make me look smarter. And making books is also pretty nice because you get to create something um, where you, in the end you have a physical object that you can hold and touch and show. And well, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. <laughs> so what I do now looks very different and maybe a bit more boring. Um, I guess you all know what these random characters mean. That's um, a git commit hash. And in my daily job, I create a lot of these. <laughs> and when I have collected a few of them, I go on GitHub, I open a pull request, and then I see a message just like on the bottom. I need someone to do a code review for me. And I think all uh, programmers among you will agree that code reviews are important, but they are also a bit like vegetables. We all know that vegetables are good for us, that they have benefits, but still, it's really hard to like, eat them consistently and integrate them into our diet. So why is that it's so hard? Well, for one, it's the time commitment, right? Someone has to take time out of their own projects, do the review for you. You have to wait for them to do it. That takes time. Also, there are a lot of social problems related to it, right? It can be a very frustrating experience if it evolves into a back and forth of comments. And also, it can be, well, it can lead to conflict. So I got to thinking and was like, hmm, maybe we can learn from the experiences from other fields. What about um, my experiences that I gained when I wanted to go into publishing? And I already started like studying in the direction. So maybe we can learn from them. So, and if we think about books, we often think about this lonely author sitting at his desk, typing furiously. But in reality, it's very different. So if we go back to this, if you look at the first pages, there are actually very many names listed here. So you have to trust me on this one because you can't obviously read it, but there's, for example, a managing editor, a designer, illustrator, proofreader, indexer. Many people are involved in making a book. And in this way, it's just like with code, right? It's a team effort. There are many people working together to create something. And actually, a lot of these people do stuff that's really similar to what we need to do to make a good code review. So I collected some ideas that we can use from them. And one of the first roles uh, that come into play is the copy editor. His job is to make sure that the spelling and grammar in the book are correct and according to the rules. This thing is actually pretty easy for us because, well, programming languages also have rules, they have syntax, but in most cases we cannot really make syntax errors because the compiler will handle it for us, our build tools will handle that for us, so we're pretty much good on that part. Um, but there's a second aspect to it, and that's oh, consistency. So basically what that means is that there are many words in natural languages, um, like donut, for example, that have variants of spelling that are both equally correct. But in a book, you want to make sure that only one of these versions is used at the same time. And this is something we can all relate to because we also have these uh, conventions that we want to have uh, consistently used in our code. I just maybe say tabs versus spaces. Then we have where do the brackets go? Do they go on the next line? Are they on the same line? Do we have white space before brackets? All these things. So what can we now learn from uh, publishing? Well, usually how that goes is that the publisher picks a set of rules, and those are the de facto standard. So in most cases, they follow the recommendations of a dictionary. For example, a German publisher might say, OK, we always use the Duden recommendations. And what we should do is exactly the same. We should pick one set of standards for all these code styling issues and then stick to it. And the best part about this is that we can, the same as uh, we do with spell checkers uh, in word processors, we can automate all of that. This is something that's in reality very trivial and should not be done by humans. So just like most copy editors don't have to worry about donut versus donut in their daily work because that's handled by the spell checker, we should set up blinting tools and 
maybe tools like Pretty Eye and JavaScript that handle all of that for us. Maybe your IDE supports this. So just make sure that in your team you agree upon a set of rules, you set up the tools that enforce these, and then your code reviewer should never ever have to worry about white space or tabs <laughs> ever again. So the next person, why is that so messed up? I'm sorry, for some reason it's a bit shifted. Okay. Maybe like this. <laughs> so, so the next role that's super important in the publishing process is the editor. He actually has a lot of different tasks, but uh, one is that he has to have a look at the manuscript and read it through the eyes of the reader. So basically what he does is he, he helps the author to polish the manuscript so that it has the best possible effect later on. So, um, this could be something like the structure. It's the flow of the story working out. Are there any uh, logical errors? Are there any plot holes if it's fiction? Um, is it readable? Is it understandable? This, is it, uh, yeah, does the message come across? And one thing that we can take from publishing again is that what you see here is um, a set of correction marks. So there's a very elaborate set of different marks and how you write different types of comments in text. And I encourage you to do the same when you write code reviews. So basically you should always make sure that when you write comments on a review that for the author of the uh, pull request it is very clear what type of comment that is. Is it a change request or is it just an idea or a recommendation? Because if you write 30 comments, it can be pretty hard to figure out which ones are the important ones and which ones are just maybe, yeah, good ideas that you want to mention. So make it clear. Either if you write it very explicitly or you can come up with your own uh, system of emojis to use, do whatever you like. So one other thing that we can learn from the editor is that their job is, um, very difficult because they have to make the book good, but they also have to keep their distance from it. So they should never try to make the book their book. They should always try to make it the best possible book the author wrote. This means they have to stay emotionally disconnected and they should always keep in mind that um, they should support the author. They should never be in the spotlight. So you should do that as well. If you want to have something changed, think about why do you want to have it changed? Is it just your personal preference or is it really something that breaks a rule that your team agreed upon? Or is it maybe really, I don't know, a performance uh, issue later on? And then the important part, write good comments. <laughs> good is very fuzzy, I know, but um, you should know that the experience can be very frustrating. It's exactly the same for an author who gets a draft back where everything is read. And it's the same if you get a code review back and you have 30 comments and you're like, oh, I have to fix all of them now. So make sure that some of the comments are also positive. Make sure to give credit when people do some hard refactorings. Give credit when they come up with good solutions. And if you have to criticize something, always uh, be mindful of how you do it. Explain everything. Give reasons why you don't want, uh, why you want something changed. Um, if you have different ideas. For example, if you like, don't like a name, um, recommend a different one. But make sure that it's only a recommendation and not like, yeah, you should do this. Um, also, you can ask questions, but in my personal opinion, if you have the chance, if you have a question because you don't understand what the person was thinking and what they wanted to achieve with the code, it's most of the times better to just talk to them in person. Because if you start writing questions, it can come across very aggressively. You can try to tone it down if you make liberal use of uh, smiley faces, but still sometimes personal talk is easier. Yeah. And what you should obviously never ever do is attack someone personally and use strong language in any way because that won't help in any way. You need to be encouraging. You, need, you want to improve the other person's code. You want to help them. You do not want to put them down. And I think Sasha is going to mention some tips on that as well later on. And also why this is important for you especially because in publishing the author is always the author and the editor is always the editor. But for us we're always switching sides. So um, when you're the author you have to keep in mind that um, 
the other person who's doing your review now is, uh, is on your side. Yeah? You're on the same team. He's not there to attack you. He's there to help you. So what you should do is always assume that the other person has very good intentions and um, always be mindful of their time as well, right? Because if you give someone a code review where they have no uh, means to understand it, it's very hard and time consuming. So give them good um, explanations, give them comments, and then you, be, you are mindful of their time and they are already in a much better mindset when they start looking at your code. Yeah. So just to sum it up, there's just a few tips that we can take from publishing. There are obviously more, but we don't have that much time. So you should automate everything that's trivial and can be automated because humans should not be doing the tasks that machines can do for us. And you should instead focus on the hard parts that cannot be automated. All the things that are more into the area of opinions and personal preferences and tricky parts, this is what you should focus on. And Everybody should always keep in mind that you're working on one common goal. You're a team here, so write nice comments because you are always sometimes on the receiving, sometimes on the dishing outside. And what I think is great about these tips is that most of them um, are some things that every one of you can do on their own. For most of them, you do not need to have your team on board from the beginning. You can just start doing them on your own and then maybe um, spread the knowledge across the team. And also, practice makes perfect, so don't expect, to, don't expect everything to go perfectly on the first try. So, thank you very much. Thank you.